The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about having a perfectly balanced pool. Is it possible to have a pool with the perfect pH, perfect alkalinity, the calcium hardness and range, and of course your chlorine and range? And can you keep it that way all week long? And I'll go over some of the reasons why this may not be possible, or some reasons why you may be able to do this and get it pretty close to spot on every week. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right. And sometimes those intros are kind of hard to kind of get the idea across, but basically a lot of people are trying to keep their pools perfectly balanced. They want their pH between 7.4 and 7.6 and they want the alkalinity between 80 and 120 and you know the ranges that are recommended and if you pull up anything on the internet that tells you the particular range of of your pool chemistry it'll give you the ideal levels and can you actually keep your pool within that ideal range and I'll of course give you the ideal ranges in a minute but to answer the question I think it's pretty much impossible on a weekly basis if you check your chemicals once a week like most pool professionals will do when they go to your pool. Or as a homeowner, most people don't check their their pool chemistry more than once a week, sometimes twice a week. But can you achieve a balanced pool by just the nature of the pool itself? And I'll give you an example. For example, a plaster pool will have a high acid demand, which means that the pH will always be rising in a plaster pool unless there's some other factors, but I'll I'll definitely touch on some of those also. Um, first, the first factor would be if you have a saltwater generator in your pool, then of course, just by the nature of the saltwater generator, the pH will rise even higher than normal. If you have a water feature or a waterfall, um, by the aeration, that'll bring the pH up. It's just a natural occurring process in the water. And then of course, the plaster itself has a high acid demand because the pH of the plaster um, is relatively high. I think cement is like around 11 or 12 on the pH chart. And so the pH is always going to rise in a plaster pool. Some things that may keep it lower are using the tri- uh, three inch trichlor tablets. If you use a lot of the trichlor tablets in your pool, the trichlor tablet has a pH of about four. And basically by using a lot of these tablets, the pH will stay lower. If you use borates in your pool, the borates are a natural pH buffer, and so this will also keep the pH lower in your pool. It'll keep it from bouncing up very high in your pool rapidly or dropping really low in your pool. So there's these factors that you have to consider. So basically, in a plaster pool, the pH is going to continue to rise on you, and then you're going to have to add muriatic acid or a dry acid to lower the pH every week. So that's one factor. And then, of course, I guess I can make it even more complicated by mentioning that the alkalinity level affects how the acid reacts in your pool. So if you have an alkalinity of 180 parts per million, um, basically if, if you add a quart of acid there, the alkalinity, will, the high alkalinity will buffer that acid and it'll be harder for the pH to drop in your pool. First is if the alkalinity is at 40 parts per million, if you put a quart of acid in there, since there's no buffer for that acid, the pH will drop much more rapidly. So it's a little bit more complex than just looking at the chart and trying to keep your pH within that range. Um, And most charts will give you the pH range of 7.2 to 7.8, or some will say 7.4 to 7.6 as the ideal. It varies from chart to chart. Free chlorine would be one part to three parts per million. I personally think that one part per million is too low. Alkalinity is anywhere from 80 to 120. And the calcium hardness range, again, depending on which chart you look at, can go from 200 to 400 in a plaster pool, and then in a vinyl pool, anywhere from 150 to 250, depending on the chart. Cyanuric acid typically should be 30 to 50 parts per million, and some charts will say that 80 parts per million is fine also if you have a saltwater pool. So there's really not a huge consensus on the exact 
level that your pool should be at, but you kind of have an idea of the ideal ranges to shoot for um, as far as the pH and alkalinity, and cyanuric acid, calcium hardness, and chlorine. Um, so within those ranges, depending on, again, which website you go to, will be the ideal ranges. Now, now can you keep your pool in the ideal range week to week? And why is it important to keep it in the ideal range should be probably the better question. Of course, when it comes to the chlorine level, the ideal range is important because if it gets to zero, then you're going to have algae problems, the water's going to be cloudy, and the water will not be safe to swim in because there's no chlorine in there that's available to kill viruses, bacteria, and microorganisms. So that's a pretty easy one. But what about the other readings like your pH and alkalinity and calcium hardness? Why are those important to keep in balance? And I think the best way to answer this is if I send you to a website and a calculator that has an LSI calculator built into it. And the LSI is the uh, Langlier Saturation Index, and it was developed um, quite a while ago, actually. And this gives you an idea of if your pool water is corrosive or if it's scale forming. And if the water is corrosive, that means that it'll damage the pool surface. Um, it'll be hard to swim in because your eyes will burn, your skin will itch, and it may even get to the point where it ruins your, your coping of your pool because the water is so corrosive, it'll definitely damage your equipment. And so you definitely do not want corrosive water. And I guess a good way to kind of give you an idea what corrosive water is like, that's a pH of be anything below um, 7.0 would start to get very really corrosive in your pool. You're going to notice staining on the surface of the pool. And you may notice, again, your skin itching or burning, especially in a hot tub. If the pH drops below 7, it's below what your body pH is, and you're going to start developing a rash. You're going to get, um, again, itchy skin, burning eyes, things like that. And so that's considered corrosive water, and that's on the LSI chart when it gets in the corrosive range um, with the lower pH in your pool. Um, and also, the other side of it is scale forming. So if you have a pool that has a lot of calcium buildup on the tile, or the surface may feel like sandpaper, really rough. That could be the scaling, but it could also be the corrosion also. If it's corrosive, the plaster could also feel rough. So there's no way to really know exactly which way your water is until you do a measurement of the LSI in the pool or get the LSI reading in your pool. So one of the better LSI calculators that you can find online is by Orenda Technologies. You can go to their website, orendatech.com. That's O-R-E-N-D-A tech T-E-C-H dot com and then if you go there if you're on their desktop version you would just scroll over to where it says resources and then click on their pool dosing calculator they probably should put their pool dosing calculator on their home page directly with the link um, but you can scroll over to that and you can also put the app on your phone and get the doses calculator that way and when you go into the doses calculator I'm going to go in there right now so there, there are many factors to calculate the LSI in the pool. Water temperature, then you have your pH, the calcium hardness, and you have your alkalinity. And the calcium hardness is different from total hardness, which test strips will give you a total hardness reading. But the calcium hardness you can get from either a reagent test kit like a Taylor 2005-2006 kit or the homeowner version. You can also get the calcium hardness with a photometer. And then you have your alkalinity, and then your cyanuric acid level, and you also have your TDS, or salt level in the pool, which most people don't really take into account. Hardly anyone checks for the total dissolved solids in the pool. The only way to check for that is with a digital electronic meter. If you take your sample into a pool store, they should be able to test your total dissolved solids. There are baseline levels for that. And if you have a salt water pool, since salt is one of the elements of the TDS is going to read pretty high. So typically if your pool's at 1200 on the TDS level they would want you to drain the water because it's pretty high but with a salt pool your TDS is going to show somewhere about 4000 or so because the salt is in the water giving you a very high reading which I guess is okay in some cases. It's kind of debatable if the salt really is a problem in the pool but that's probably for another podcast. And then um, you would put these numbers in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in here. You can do this at home yourself. So the water temperature is going to be 70. And then the pH, I'm going to put it at the ideal 7.4, let's say. And then the calcium in the pool, I'm going to put at 200. So here is actually what you're looking for for the ideal range. 
if you have a plus 0 0.30 on the app, it'll be purple. That means that your water is oversaturated and scale forming. If you're at 0 to plus 0 0.30, which is green, you're in the ideal LSI range. This is your target range. So it's 0 to plus 0 0.30. If you're in the negative 0 0.30 to the negative 0 0.01, you're in the yellow range, which is acceptable, but you want to kind of turn it over to get on the plus side. It's not corrosive per se, but you're heading that way. And then if you are below negative 0 0.30, the water is aggressive, corrosive, it's damaging the surface, damaging the equipment. You definitely want to turn that around as quickly as possible to get those numbers on the LSI on the positive side. So on the Renda app, purple is scale forming. Green is the ideal range, 0 to plus 0 0.30. Yellow is kind of, you're getting towards the corrosive range. And then red, the water is aggressive or corrosive. You don't want to correct that. So I like the color on the app. I like the color um, indicator on the app because it gives you an idea of where you should be. And of course, everyone knows green is good. And not to bore you to death with a math podcast here, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my numbers here so you can kind of see if you could do this with your pool if you go to the arendatech.com site. And again, I think their LSI calculator is spot on. So I'm going to put my numbers in from my pool here. And I'll give you an idea where my pool falls on the chart of being corrosive or scale forming. So the water temperature is 73 degrees. I just did a test before I recorded this. The pH is at 7.6. Actually, the pH is at 7.8. And then the calcium hardness of my pool is 320. And then the alkalinity is at 100. And then my stabilizer is about 50 parts per million. And since I have a salt water pool with the salt level of 30, 300 parts per million, my TDS is probably somewhere around 3,800. I didn't actually do the TDS meter this morning, but I'm guessing around there. And so if I look at the LSI chart, my pool is at 73 degrees, pH is 7.8, calcium hardness at 320, alkalinity at 100 and my salt making my uh, cyanuric acid levels at 50 and this, the TDS or salt 3800 so my LSI is actually 0 0.01 negative 0 0.01 so it's pretty close to being balanced there um, on the chart here and this online calculator is actually pretty fun to play with if I were to raise my pH to 8 and my alkalinity went up to 150 then the LSI would be 0 0.39 with all the other current readings the same, which is scale forming. So in my pool, I got I have to keep my pH actually about 7.8, and I got to keep my alkalinity right around 100, um, roughly 100 to keep it near zero with the calcium hardness of 320. So not using the LSI is kind of like driving down the street in your car and never looking in the rearview mirror, never checking behind you, and you would never do that in reality. So not checking behind your pool water to see if it's scale forming or corrosive is kind of the same thing. You're not checking why you're balancing your pool or why you want these ideal numbers. And sometimes the ideal range is not good based on the LSI and water temperature is a factor. So you want to make sure that you are balancing your pool correctly. If you have a tailor kit, it's going to have the water gram in there and you can use that to balance your LSI. I find the online apps much better, much easier to use. Again, the arendatech.com app is a great one to use. You can get it on your phone, and you can do the readings there. So I challenge you as a homeowner and as a pool tech to start using the LSI to balance your pool water and not relying on these charts online or the charts that come with your test kit to tell you that these are the ideal ranges because in a lot of cases, they're not because you're not seeing the full picture of what the actual pH, alkalinity, cyanuric acid and also the water temperature are doing to your pool without the LSI. And I don't want to beat a dead horse, but basically without the LSI as part of the equation, getting a balanced pool is pretty impossible. So here is the scary part about not using the LSI calculator. So I'll give you this example. Let's say that it's, you know, maybe winterish time, let's say February or so, your water temperature is 65 degrees, your pH is 7.4, your calcium hardness is at 200, your alkalinity is at 80, your cyanuric acid is at 50, 
and your TDS is below 1000, your LSI is negative 0.52, which means that the water in this pool is corrosive at these numbers, where if you look at the charts online, it looks perfectly balanced, but it's not. And so if your pool is fairly stable with the pH, you may need to raise your pH up, even if it's a 7.4, because in this chart, the water is corrosive. So if I were to raise the pH up to 7.8, and also leave the alkalinity at 80, but I can bring the alkalinity up to 100, let's say. So 65 degree water temperature, pH of 7.8, calcium hardness of 200, alkalinity at 100, cyanuric acid at 50, and TDS below 1,000. You're actually near zero on the LSI, which means your pool is not scale forming, nor is it corrosive. But see how high that pH is at 7.8, when you may have thought, since your pool's doing well and holding the pH really well, at 7.4, your water is actually corrosive. So that's the danger of not using the LSI, where you think you may have a perfectly balanced pool. And so if you're listening to this podcast and you're trying to get your water perfectly balanced without using, again, the LSI calculator or a similar calculator, there's actually uh, three or four other different um, calculators out there that you can use to to know if your pool is scale forming or corrosive. But the LSI is pretty much the industry standard, so I'm using that in this podcast here. Again, if you're not using this, there's just no way to achieve a balanced pool. There's no way to get your pool close to being ideal. Um, again, chlorine is not a factor in this because we're talking mainly about corrosive water and scale forming water in your pool. And of course, you definitely want to keep your chlorine in balance, and that's somewhat easier to do. But that's not actually an important factor here because the the main thing is making sure that your water is not destroying the surface of your pool and causing problems when you're swimming like burning eyes or itchy skin nor do we want your pool to be really rough or have the calcium line all over the pool with the scale forming water so all these factors are important I think you have to take into account the calcium hardness of your pool, which a lot of people don't test for, the alkalinity and the pH, and all of these together, um, the total dissolved solids are a factor somewhat, but a lot of people can't measure those accurately, so I'm leaving that out here. The cyanuric acid level is a pretty huge factor because then you have to do the adjusted alkalinity. So if I were to raise the cyanuric acid level in this pool that I'm just talking about, I'm going to raise it to... 150, which, you know, is pretty high. Even at 150, um, with the alkalinity, I'm going to put the alkalinity at 80. So if your cyanuric acid level is 150 and your alkalinity is at 80 and the pH is at 7.6, you're actually at a negative 0.52, so it's definitely corrosive at that level because the cyanuric acid level is a factor in the LSI calculator here. So you need the whole picture. You need to get the big picture of your pool water and again, go to the arendatech.com site, pull up their pool dosing calculator, and take a look at your pool's LSI. Go ahead and take a water sample into your pool store, get the printout, and then go home and put it into the LSI calculator and see if your pool is corrosive or scale forming. A lot of pool stores will have the LSI readout on the sheet itself when they do the reading for you. Some don't. If you're a homeowner and you have a Taylor K2005 kit or definitely a photometer kit, you can get all these numbers, put them in the calculator, and see where your pool stands. And if you're a pool pro and you're doing your pool service, doing the LSI definitely takes a lot of time. But you can kind of get an idea from experience of doing this for a while of what the pool is at. Based on calculating it many times over, you can get a, kind of get a ballpark of the LSI in the pool. And so you may not need to do it every week because it's going to be a little bit time consuming to run all these numbers. Plus the calcium hardness number doesn't change very often. And there are a lot of pools where the alkalinity is pretty stable. The cyanuric acid level won't change unless you add um, a lot of tablets to the pool or add cyanuric acid to it. And the salt level or TDS stays pretty stable in the pool. So actually you don't need to do the LSI at every single pool every week because if you have a pool route of 80 pools, you'd be spending a lot of time doing the chemistry reading. But definitely you want to do the LSI as often as possible. And again, you kind of have these ballpark numbers in your head from using this chart. And if you use the LSI calculators very often, you may not even need to plug the numbers in. You can kind of know offhand 
For instance, if the water temperature is 70, you know, the pH is 7.4, 7.2, and the calcium hardness is 200 or lower, the alkalinity is low, and the stabilizer is within range, you're going to know just by those numbers that it's probably a corrosive water environment. So you want to raise the pH up in there. And you can kind of get this by playing with the calculator, getting to know the pools on your route, and so you can kind of balance them in your head, so to speak. But of course, you definitely want to put the numbers on a chart um, to get the exact reading. But I can tell when I get to a pool just by the numbers when I get there, if it is scale forming or corrosive within that range, um, just by the numbers that I get with my regular testing. But of course, you're not going to know the exact LSI without putting in the chart. Um, you can look at a pool in California with a calcium hardness of 400, a pH of 8+. plus. A really high alkalinity of 150 if the cyanuric acid level is in balance in the summertime the water temperature is hotter right away in your head you know that this is a scale forming pool because of the high calcium hardness level the high pH and the high alkalinity you don't know the exact LSI but you know that these numbers put it in the scale forming side and so the pool surface may be rough you may see the scale on the water line of the pool or in the spillway um, so these are kind of like rule of thumbs that you can kind of gather by doing this often, but definitely plug the numbers into the calculator as often as possible to balance the pool. For the homeowner, you definitely want to use an LSI calculator on a regular basis when you do your weekly water testing. It doesn't take that much time for you with one pool to do that, um, but it's definitely the key to balancing your water. So to summarize, I go back to the original question, can you have a perfectly balanced pool? You can get close to it, but you have to use the LSI index, and you also have to make sure that you're watching if the water, if the ideal ranges are not really ideal for your pool, in other words. So I hope that wasn't too complicated for you for the podcast. I hope you get the idea that without the LSI index, you're missing one key equation to answer the question. It's like a math problem that someone would give you and you need this particular number to get the right answer. And without this number, you can never get it. So that's kind of like how my son's math is. He's 12, and the math, I think, is really complicated. But anyway, that's another story. And if you go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com, on the homepage, if you scroll down to the middle, you're going to see the link to click on. You have the Pool Calculator app, which I really like. And then you have the Orenda app next to it. Click on that link. It'll take you directly to the online calculator that I'm talking about here. And then there's also links to download it to your phone, whether you have an Apple phone or an Android phone. So definitely take advantage of that. Again, the website is swimmingpoollearning.com. And if you're in the industry and you're starting out or if you've been doing this for a while and you want to enhance your business, definitely check out my coaching program at poolguidecoaching.com. A lot of great benefits there, including the ability to call me and text me in real time. You can learn more about that at poolguidecoaching.com again. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.